For many, snowflakes are simply winter's unruly weapon, something to avoid. But look a little closer and you might just find a sight to behold. I didn't really notice these things when I was growing up in North Dakota, but when I started reading about it, then it was like, oh, there's a lot more out there than I ever thought to look for. The physics magic Kenneth Liebrecht is now the world's preeminent snowflake photographer. Do you only go after the really <laughs> pretty ones? Well, I tend to do that. I tend to try to find the, uh, the supermodel snowflakes, but, um, but I also look for you know, everyday ones and simpler crystals. From the simple to the sublime, Liebrecht has documented all kinds of frosted flakes in his books, now translated into 12 languages. His work also adorned the Postal Service's 2006 holiday stamp. They sold more than two billion of them. So how do you photograph snowflakes? Well, very carefully. You can pick them up, uh, and yes, they do break. <laughs> but you know they're falling out of the sky, so if you break one, you throw it away, and you get another one. Liebrecht has spent $10,000 of his own money building a camera with a magnifying lens that he uses to capture the tiny crystals. Because different flakes form at different temperatures, Liebrecht often has less than a minute to snap a picture before a flake is gone. Many times I'll, I'll have like the perfect, you know, it looks like the perfect snowflake and I'll pick it up and I'll be about to drop it and, and a gust of wind comes, poof, there it's gone. And it's like, oh no, <laughs> I really wanted that one. But Do you ever have to catch yourself and say, hey, these are just snowflakes. <laughs> Don't get carried away here. <laughs> well, they're not just snowflakes, come on. <laughs> you see, Liebrecht isn't just some flake who takes pictures of snow. He's the head of Caltech's physics department in Pasadena. Yes, he studies snowflakes in California. There are a lot of misconceptions about snowflakes. Uh, some people think that every snowflake is perfectly symmetrical and star-shaped, and that's not true at all. Uh, a lot of them are lopsided. Uh, a lot of them just look like sand. In fact, they are tiny crystals formed by chance and frozen in time. There are 35 basic shapes of snowflakes, Yet it's true, no two are exactly the same. They are almost always six or 12 sided, never five or eight. I bet you never imagined you'd make a living <laughs> looking at snowflakes. No, no, it never occurred to me. But when I got into the science, I found it was really very interesting and the science kind of led me to do stuff in the lab. So kind of snowballed, if you will. <laughs> in his lab, he now grows individual snow crystals in a chilled chamber, examining them with the care of a jeweler. I'm trying to be a snowflake artist. <laughs> that's, my, that's one of my goals, is to be able to make you know, snowflakes in the lab that look just as nice as the ones in the outside and, and maybe even better and more interesting and more elaborate and, and different because um, I can control the conditions in the lab uh, in ways that you know, never appear in nature. The so, bioscience of snowflakes. Yeah, making what I call designer snowflakes. <laughs> Cochrane, Ontario. Big flakes coming down. Yet it's no substitute for his treks into the winter wilderness. Liebrich says some of the best flakes found are in northern Ontario and near the Great Lakes. And his job does come with one never-ending occupational hazard. The best crystals fall when it's 5 or 10 degrees outside, so you really got to bundle up. And, and uh, at the same time, I have to pick them up, so I have to have my fingers free. And so, <laughs> so my fingers get very cold sometimes. See, there it is. That's a big, ugly one. And what he gets in return is so spectacular it too can give you chills.